Here's my company. Um, awesome. We are live, everybody. If you are on YouTube, give us a hello. If you can hear me, can you hear me on YouTube? Uh, there you go. Can you hear me? Are we good on YouTube? Let me know if you can or cannot. Hold on there. Um, let me know if you can hear me on YouTube. What's your questions? What is your question? Hold on, Tickies. See if that works. There you go, trying to get it going. What's going on? Chat in the box if you can hear me. If you can hear me, um, go in the chat box there. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, I, can, I don't know if the audio is working or not. Hey, from TikTok, what's going on? Can you guys, you can hear you on YouTube. Awesome. So let's get some questions. I got TikTok here, YouTube here. I'm going to start going live on Wednesdays on YouTube at 2 p.m. Central. I had a little bit of problem getting going, but let's do it. So what I want these lives to be is to be me answering questions. I'm going to answer questions on both and repeat. I just want to be able to answer your questions for free. So um, and uh, give as much quality information as I can. So sometimes there'll be a theme, usually not. But what questions do you have about real estate investing? No, this is not bourbon or scotch. This is just unsweet tea. So what questions do you have about real estate investing, wholesaling, renting? Think of them, put them in there. Um, let me introduce myself for you that those, those of you that don't know who I am, which is probably is a lot of you. My name is Sam. I'm a real estate investor. I own a house buying company that we bought 204 houses last year. So everybody's talking about how this market's so crazy hot right now. It is, but we're still finding a way to buy houses. So we can talk about how to find houses. We can talk about um, rental properties. I also have 125 unit rental portfolio. So I do a lot in the real estate investing space. And my goal here is to answer your questions. Just a simple live q and I go live on Wednesdays at two on YouTube. I release a video on Monday and Friday on YouTube at four central. So let's uh, let's go ahead and get answering some questions now that I gave you a little bit of the um, of the intro. So first question right here: What is the deal with new? What is the deal with the new rule from banks on using the Burr strategy, making investors pay? more now. Can you clarify that a little bit? I don't know what that new rule is from the bank. So why don't you clarify that a little bit? Um, where do you find private money lenders? Great question, Claire Russell. The question is where you find private money lenders. You find private money lenders from a lot of different sources. Usually it's not a rich aunt, a rich uncle. Okay. You usually don't have, you know, most people don't have, you know, somebody in their favorites on their phone that is a private lender potentially. I sure did it. So how you find private lenders is you let people know that you are successful in real estate investing in a non cocky way. Let's say you post about your, what you're doing in real estate investing. If you're wholesaling, if you're using hard money, whatever you're doing, post about what you're doing. People will reach out to you. We had our insurance guy and our tax, um, tax person reach out to us recently offering us money for deals. If people see that you're there being successful, people want to diversify their portfolio. I can guarantee you that if you concentrate in the next six months, you will find a private money lender. It might not happen overnight. Everyone give this video a like, by the way, there's no likes. Everyone, please, everyone throw that like button. Um, there's in the next six months, if you try to find a private money lender, you will. If you try for three, four, five, six days and you, you know, send me a message on here on Instagram um, saying that you are, you know, I've tried and I can't find anybody. You got to try harder than that. Try six, um, try for six months to a year. If it takes you two years to find one private money lender, it's worth it. In the meantime, use hard money lenders or wholesale. So there's some options. What other questions we got to see quite a bit up there? We got TikTok here, YouTube up there. Um, awesome. Appreciate it. What other questions? How do sellers... Um, how, um, how to get sellers to entertain VA or FHA loans? I have had a seller give me no's. That's the great question, Ethan. So Ethan's question or comment is about um, getting sellers to entertain FHA or VA loan offers when you're selling a house. So when we flip houses and we sell it, we prefer the quickest, cleanest offer possible, which is usually a conventional loan 20% down or cash these days because it's so crazy. But that's not always the case for a lot of people can't afford 20% down or cash, obviously. So what they do is they have a VA or FHA loan, which are basically, to not get too much detail, just government back government subsidized loans that require more inspections and they take a little bit longer. So if I'm selling my house, obviously I want to sell it the highest price, but to the person that's going to be able to close the quickest. The best way to do that is to offer more, I guess. I mean, you don't want to overpay, but if you can offer a little more um, and do that or do your best to get your client out of that FHA loan if they can at all. What other questions? Um, 
what other questions we got. I'll get to as many as I can. I'm probably not going to get to all of them. I'm just going to go live for 20 minutes here. Again, if you're on here, I'll make sure to like this and share this with anybody um, that you know that's interested in real estate investing. It's just me talking with you, having a, a, a conversation with you all for you know, 20, 25 minutes um, every Wednesday at 2 Central. I'm just starting to do this. We've done a lot with our YouTube channel. If you notice, we had a pretty big boost there for a while. Then things kind of slowed down. We we had a lot of things going on internally, and now we are ready to ramp this YouTube back up. So you will start seeing two produced videos a week plus one live a week every single Wednesday going live at two, Monday and Friday releasing videos. So, all right, let's get to some questions. Best book to get into real estate investing? Love, these, love this question. So, uh, Brendan. There's a few different books I would suggest using. This is what kind of book should you get into if you want to invest in real estate? Um, I like to get my mindset and my business acumen and um, personal development growth from books and audiobooks. So Rich Dad, Poor Dad's a great one. Um, Think and Grow Rich is a great one. I love Good to Great by Jim Collins. Um, there's The Millionaire Next Door. Um, those type of books are great. Eat That Frog is about getting things done quickly the right way. Um, pitch Anything. Those are all great mindset, self-development, make yourself better type books. As far as the real estate knowledge goes, I know people have Burr's books out there and people have different things that they do, but things do change a little bit. Real estate investing overall is, you know, pretty similar. Buy something, fix it up, sell it for more. Buy something and mark it up and wholesale it. Buy a rental property, put 20% down or use the burst method. That's all pretty, pretty standard. However, laws change, taxes change, different avenues, different blenders are becoming more available. So things do change a lot. So for my real estate knowledge, I like to listen to podcasts and YouTube channels. So like mine, Make sure you subscribe here if you're not to my YouTube. Make sure you follow my TikTok, my Instagram. Actually, send me a message on Instagram if you want my free training. I have a free 85-minute webinar. No strings attached. You just got to, you know, uh, you know, put in your email address so we, we can send it to you. Um, but other than that, just um, go there to my YouTube. Send me a message on Instagram, and I will send you that free training link. No strings attached. So th that's a way to start as well. So just bigger pockets, my stuff. Um, you know, I, I got I got a lot of other people in the space that do a very good job as well, if not better than I do, probably. All right, so keep the questions coming. What other questions? If I missed a couple, just ask it again. Make sure to give this like and share. If everyone wouldn't mind liking and sharing this, I'd appreciate it. All right, what do you think about being your own GC to earn extra dollar? Great question. The question is, um, you need a refi bank in Missouri, First State Bank of St. Charles or American Bank. All right, so what do you think about being your own general contractor to earn an extra dollar? So if you are good at general contracting if you have general contracted before and if you are good at contracting then i think it's probably an option if you have the time and again if you're on TikTok, i'm answering questions on youtube so stay here or go to youtube faster freedom and subscribe and, and watch this live if you want me to answer your question go there but stay here if you just want to hear the questions answered um so i would say most people that's not the case um that's not the case for most people um um, Maran, I believe that's how you say your name. That's not the case for most people. They don't have extensive construction experience in flipping houses. So doing it themselves, it's going to take longer and it's going to cost more money because they're going to make mistakes and they're going to um, not do things efficiently and they're going to take longer. So it's okay if you have experience. If you don't have a ton of experience, I would do what you can yourself. You can probably do the landscaping yourself. Um, you can probably uh, you know paint yourself, demo yourself. Uh, as far as hiring out, out the other trades, um, that's a little bit different. Your question was about general contracting. It kind of took it off on a little bit of a tangent. But um, about general contracting, which is, is, is no big deal, if you're just going to general contract and you have the time and have the connections, then maybe. But even having somebody else manage the projects, that that's their job, is probably going to be more effective and efficient. And usually they're going to charge 10% on top of what things cost. But hopefully they'll save you that 10% by being more efficient and effective, I guess is my opinion there. Not the best answer. Sorry about that one. Again, if you haven't liked this video, please do that. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube as well and TikTok and Instagram. What kind of contract do you need the bird dog? You need a wholesale contract. So if you want a free contract or if you want a contract about bird dogging, go to uh, Faster Freedom Muran. Muran. There you go. Thank you, sir. Um, go to Muran. Muran. Um, if you go to um, fasterfreedom.com slash contract fasterfreedom.com slash contract. I guess this way, fasterfreedom.com slash contract. And that is where you will get our free contract. So go there, you give us your email, we'll shoot you over the contract. I think it should work that way. I'm having such a hard time finding buyers and starting wholesaling. So, um, so Diamond Girl, great question. She says, I am having a hard time finding buyers and starting wholesaling. So 
finding buyers should be pretty simple if you have a good property. Um, it's really hard to find um, deals right now, but usually if you find a deal, it's easy to sell. So I actually just shot a YouTube video today that should be out in the next week or two about how we are still finding deals. We bought 204 houses last year. We bought over 50 this year, and most of them came from $0 in marketing spend. So if that interests you, make sure you subscribe so you get notified, hit the notification bell so you get notified when um, our video comes out in the next week or two maybe. But it's about how we find deals in this crazy hot market because people can just list their house that they usually wouldn't list because the market's so hot and someone's going to buy it. But there are still deals out there. Uh, we're still buying a lot. And I know a lot of people that are buying a lot. So I talk about that a lot. So starting wholesaling, I would suggest joining your local real estate investing Facebook group, join your local real estate investing meetup group, um, and getting to know people in your market and in your um, current market that you want to invest in. If you join those local Facebook groups, there's a lot of BS on there. There's even a few scammers on there, but there are good wholesalers. There are good buyers in those groups and go to those local meetups. At those local meetups, you are going to meet. Go to meetup.com, real estate investing, type it in. There should be one in your town um, if you have a decent sized town. But at those meetups, there's contractors, there's wholesalers, there's real estate agents, there's usually small local banks, there's usually hard money lenders. There's pretty much everybody that you need to get to know to wholesale, to flip, or to rent at those insurance agents, at those specific meetups. So go there, that's where you're going to meet all your people. Have some more bourbon kidding is tea do your offer any um muran uh muran sorry sir muran do you offer any education courses coaching we do i'm this is my, my youtube tiktok instagram is all my free stuff i give away a ton for free but we do have that just purely out of uh, requests that people want more one-on-one -on -one attention and more focus from um us, you know, Faster Freedom and the team up here. Um, so if you want more information on that, send me a message on Instagram um, and I can send you more information on that on our free training and as well as our, we have a live rental academy. It's a 10 week course that we teach everything we know about growing a rental portfolio, um, using other people's money. You get lifetime access. It's great. We also have a mastermind, a national mastermind um, of like-minded people that want to grow their business and become financially free through real estate. So we do have some options for you if you have interest. If not, just take care of the, uh, just take advantage of the free stuff. Should I print out, print out a physical copy of both contracts signed by the seller and buyer in order to title company? I would, yes, I would, I would print it out for sure. Joe Biden's on here. What uh, is the down payment percentage hard lenders require? So that's a great question. So hard lenders. So if you're going to buy houses without using your own money and flip them, wholesale them and close, or even use the Burrs method and buy, um, by using the buy, rehab, rent, refinance, scale method, you're gonna to have to use other people's money. One of those sources is hard money lenders. Um, there are some hard money lenders out there that do not require money out of pocket. I would say probably 75% do, maybe 70% do, but there's some out there that don't. If it's a good deal, that's the biggest thing. If you're bringing these hard money lenders good deals, then they will be a lot more flexible in what they want. If you have a house under contract for $150,000, and it needs $25,000 worth of work and it's worth 300. They're probably gonna do the deal because it's a great deal and they're safe in their investment. The reason they want money down from you, if you're newer, is to let you have skin in the game and to show that you are willing to, um, you know, put yourself out there and to, to lessen the risk that they have because you're coming to the plate with money. However, if you've done a few deals, develop a relationship with them, or if it's a great deal, they might not require money down. And I don't know any private lenders that have ever required money down. I'm sure they're out there, but most private lenders don't require money down. So if you don't have any money and trying to get that experience, hard money, private money, or just wholesale, you don't need any money to wholesale. Um, you can get a house on a contract through your connections and sell that contract, you know, get on a contract for a hundred thousand and sell that contract for 120,000 to an end investor. They close, they pay for it. And you just made 20 grand without using any of your own money or having to close. All right. You have more DM for more information in your academy. Thank you, sir. Um, what is what other questions do we have on here? How do you find out who heirs are for the probate property? So, um, so a probate property is a property that someone, unfortunately, that owns the property passes away. The last person that on the title that passes away, and if they don't have a will or a trust that the property goes into, it goes through probate, which is the court systems, and the court systems say, hey. 
Everybody that has ever done work on this property, if you haven't been paid or if you have a lien on this property, come here now, let us know. So when we do sell, you make sure to get paid, basically in a nutshell. Um, and you might need to find out heirs, people that aren't on the title or people that are inheriting the property. Um, so how do you find those heirs? Um, lawyers or title companies should help you find those um, heirs. That's the best way to go, in my opinion there. Um, Best way to start when you don't have much capital, wholesaling. Uh, I think wholesaling is great. Another great question. Um, what is appreciation recaption uh, or recaptured appreciation? I talk about that in a little bit, a different question. Um, so the question on here that we're going to talk about, again, if you're on TikTok, you can hear me answer questions. Head over to my YouTube going live for probably five or 10 more minutes. So not 10 longer. So might as well head over there or stay here. Either one's fine. Um, so best way to start when you don't have much capital. Wholesaling is a great way to start. But um, Around, I would ask you for what your long-term goals are. If your long-term goals are rental properties and you have zero dollars, you can buy rental properties if you do it the right way, the way that we've done it. Um, I didn't have a ton of money in the bank when I got started. I had a little bit, but I, I didn't use it. I have, uh, Luke's and I have 124, 25, I lost track, is that bad? 124, 425 rental properties right now. We haven't used any of our own money to do it. And yes, we do all right now. Um, and yes, we have some funds now, but we didn't always have those. So we got started using other people's money. So if your long-term goal is rentals, start buying rentals. Our first several properties were rentals and then we wholesaled and flipped to build capital. Um, but your first few deals can be rentals, but there's nothing to say you can't do more than one thing at a time. I have a lot of people that say, should I flip or wholesale? We'll do both. Flip a property if you come across another one because your contractors are busy, wholesale it out. Or wholesale a property if you come across a killer deal that needs five grand that you can do yourself and, and flip it, flip it. There's nothing to say you can't do more than one thing at a time. Now, if it's your first deal, maybe you don't have three projects going on at a time. But if you are doing the BRRRRS method and rehabbing a property um, to rent it, you can either sell it at the end or rent it. But if you come across another deal and everybody's busy, you don't have the money, just wholesale it. So there's no reason you should ever stop looking for good deals. Um, the biggest things I would be concerned with when you're getting started is two things, your long-term goals, whatever those are, go get them now. You, be, you wish you started earlier, I promise. The second thing is to make sure and um, lost my train of thought for a second, all this crap going on. Um, long-term goals and then your short-term cash position okay so um finding out you know if you have zero dollars in the bank and you need some or you want to have some kind of fluff maybe a wholesale or two and, and then getting into rental so whatever your long-term goal is just just get after it um passive income your long-term goal is passive income then start with rentals my main what's your stance on commercial real estate um great question so kind of depends what you mean by commercial real estate um commercial commercial like office buildings well, we're buying a 24,000 square foot office building that we're moving our team, all team into here um, later this year. So if it's the right circumstance, I think it's great. I think commercial is going to be a hurt for a little bit. I think in the long run, commercial will be fine. Commercial real estate has been around a long time. I understand technology and um, everything with the virus and everything is maybe going to soften it a little bit. But in the long run, I think it's okay. The biggest hurt for or the biggest side of real estate that's going to get hurt, in my opinion, is the retail side that you can do a lot of online stuff with. So that, that that's my biggest thing that I think is going to get hurt. But I don't know if I knew 100% was going to be happening, I'd be, you know, won the lottery and wouldn't be on here. So what's the importance of personal credit when starting off in real estate? I love that. Yeah, these are great questions. You We could really help you out with our stuff. But anyways, um, what is the importance of personal credit? So the question is, you know, because a lot of people, almost everybody I know at some point or another goes through some type of issue with their credit their fault, sometimes not their fault. Um, credit gets affected at some point. Not everyone has an 800 credit score their whole life, usually. Um, so what's the importance of having that personal credit? It's pretty important. It's not the, sorry, I got a little piece of uh, ice. It's not the most important thing, but it is pretty important. I wouldn't let it hold you back. So what I would do, a few things I would do. I would work on building it no matter what, no matter where it is, no matter what you're doing in, in life, no matter what your age is, no matter what uh, you're wanting to do, I would work on my personal credit because life's just easier with a good credit. You pay less in bank loans, you pay less in car loans, you pay less in anything. So get that credit up. So start to do that. Um, I've been looking for like eight months to find a good credit repair company that I would be willing to share with people. Um, there, we have a great one, um, Credit Connection. I can put them in the links in the description after this. If not, just go to my YouTube or go to my Instagram or TikTok bio. They're in there under the, the link there. Um, they great. They, they don't charge you unless they repair your credit. They will free consultation. And then if they can't get anything off your credit score, it doesn't cost you anything. So go check them out. So, so do that no matter what. 
But then if you don't have the best credit, it's going to be a while before you get it up. You can wholesale, which requires no money, no credit. Obviously, you can use money credit, but you can do it without that. Um, you can fix and flip with hard money or private money and um, just buy it, fix it up, sell it, pay back your initial lender plus interest. You keep the rest as profit. You don't always have to have credit for that. Hard money lenders sometimes look at your credit most of the time, but not all the time. Private lenders rarely do. And then third, if you want to own rental properties, but you have bad credit, you can partner with someone that has good credit. You bring the deals, you bring the hard work, you bring the knowledge, they bring maybe the funding or at least the credit score to the deal to help make it happen. That's what my suggestion there. Or there's owner financing, there's a lot of different options. Background info, freeze question, I have a good, I have no credit history, no deck of, with our, so you, I have some videos on that, start to, so if you don't have a credit history, I'd start to get a credit, a credit history, I would start to um, open a credit card, um, open one up uh, or be an, become an authorized user on somebody else's credit card um, to help your credit score or open one up and just put a few hundred bucks on it a month of things you're actually going to buy and pay it off every single month. Don't, if your credit limit's a thousand, spend two to 300 a month on things you buy anyway and pay it off every month. That will start to boost your credit score as well as um, become an authorized user on somebody else's account. We get into getting a secured credit card, um, all that kind of stuff. We don't really need to get into too much of that, but there are things and steps you can do. I have a YouTube video on that. I, almost every question has been answered on here. I have a YouTube video on some way, shape, or form. So there you go. What time should I be cold calling? I would call, I, we, we don't do a ton of cold calling. I would cold call between like maybe, um, depends. If you're okay to get yelled at, I'd cold call between four and six. If you're not going to be yelled at, I'd cold call probably earlier in the day. Why do we need house inspections before buying? Well, it's the banks or your lender may require it. If they don't require it, it's, it's your decision. Good question. What's going on down here? Any other, any questions? There's a couple more up there. Hi, that's not a question. That's all right. All right. Should I, should you have a fix and flip property appraised while it's under contract to calculate? Um, should you have fix and flip property appraised while it's under contract to calculate? Um, that appraisal, if it's not from the buyer, it's not going to mean anything. So you can do it. So the question was, if you're fixing up a property, should you have it appraised while you're rehabbing it to have a good, strong ARV? You can cost you three, five, six, seven hundred bucks but the buyer is going to get their own appraisal. So whoever buys the house from you is going to get their own appraisal. So that can maybe help sway, but it, it doesn't honestly really mean anything besides maybe more of a perception. How do I find vacant properties? What website? So um, I would recommend, um, we have a couple, there's a few different ones that we use. I'll put on the link in the description here. There, there's a ton of different um, sites uh, where we're working, starting to set up a few things with some of the best ones out there. So um, I can definitely help you out with that. Hi from Istanbul, Turkey. How's it going? What's going on, Burke? How are you doing? Um, awesome. So uh, what others are question advice on finding distressed fixer uppers off the market? So the best thing you can do, there's a ton of different things you can do. You can spend a ton of different money. We spend 20, 25,000 a month in marketing. Um, that being said, we bought over half of our houses last year from zero dollars spent build relationships with real estate agents, with wholesalers, with connectors, with other law attorneys, with molder meat. There's a million different people that you should be building relationships today that are going to bear fruit down the line. You can't talk to one real estate agent and say, hey, I'm, I'm an investor, I'm easy to work with. Um, let's, let's do it. Where's my, my phone's right there, so I can't use my phone. First time this is my phone. Hey, Mr. Real Estate Agent, Mrs. Real Estate Agent. Yeah, I'm, I'm a new investor. I'm looking to invest. I'd like to buy a house um, this year. You know, let me know. I'll be easy to work with. That's not going to work. You got to talk to them, explain your situation, tell them exactly where you're looking, why you're looking there, give them a little bit of the story so they remember you. Hey, you know, my name is Sam. I'm looking to get into real estate investing. I got approved line with a hard money lender. Or I got money in my bank with a private lender to fund quickly. I'm looking for three bed, two bath ranches in these seven or eight zip codes. Um, ARV 300,000 or less. Doesn't matter how much work the house needs. Let me know. I'll be easy to work with. Click. Two weeks later. Hey, have you come across anything? Click. Three weeks later. Text them. You Okay, that was a weird example. But just showing that you need to contact these people. Let them know what you want. Let them know you're easy to work with and continue to follow up with them. It might take you six months to get on the top of a real estate agent's investor list. But that's a great place to be. So work to develop those relationships with real estate agents, um, wholesalers, and other connectors, as we like to call them. Was that a, do you guys like that? It's a small phone. Phones are getting bigger, not smaller. Um, all right, network, network, network. Yep, that's, I mean, it's, it's true. It's advice, but it's true. So 
Make sure you are subscribed to my TikTok, my YouTube, and my Instagram. I go live on all three platforms. As you can see, I'm going live on two right now. Um, I go live on Instagram on Tuesdays. I go live on YouTube on Wednesdays, and I go live on TikTok throughout the week. So if you like these live Q's and A, Q and A's, I'm going to start to do these on a consistent basis on a consistent time. So stay here for those. Send me a message on Instagram if you want my free training. Share this with somebody you know that got, if you got any value out of this, share this with somebody you know. I'd really appreciate it. Make sure you're following, um, following my stuff. If you want that free training, um, send me a message on Instagram. But other than that, I will go live again on Wednesday of next week. I don't know the exact date because we're switching months, but Wednesday of next week, a week from today at two o'clock central, I will be going live. Hope to see you all there. Have a good rest of your Wednesday. End. All right. So thanks for being